Welcome back to the channel and in today's Blender tutorial I'm going to show you how to make some stylized DNA. So obviously this is not what real DNA looks like, but this is kind of what DNA oftentimes would look like in like a sci-fi zoom in shot or something. So kind of like this kind of stylized approach to making DNA. We're going to be doing it um, with our modifier stack. Here you can see is another version of the same thing, um, but I'm going to go step by step and hopefully you guys can incorporate this into something that you're working on. Maybe you won't, but maybe you will. So let's jump in and make some DNA. So when you scene open up in Blender, select the default cube and tab into edit mode. And with this cube, we're gonna go S.1 to make it uh, 10 times smaller. So S.1. So now it's a small little cube. We're gonna grab, in fact, let's go to our front orthographic and we're just gonna grab this face over on our left. And we're gonna go G, X, and let's move it out to about here. And then let's grab this face in the middle and go G, X and move it out. And let's give it a mirror modifier. Enable clipping and then go G, Y and just, or G, X and just fuse these two together on the X. Go X and delete that face. So now we just have this mirrored on the X. So let's grab this face out here. Let's go E to extrude it out a bit and then grab this face over here and go E to extrude it out and then grab this face here and E to extrude it out. It doesn't have to be perfect since we are gonna add noise to this anyway. Then gonna go ahead and give it a subdivision surface modifier and then come in here and go Control R and just slide in some edges. Maybe add one in here and then Control R, maybe roll in a few extra ones. And then over here, Control R, double click, Alt S and scale it out along the normals a little bit. Tab back out and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and give this an array modifier. Let's set the Z value to one and the X, let's set that to zero. So we have it going up on the Z. And we're gonna come here to the count and make it 50, like so. And at the moment, it's looking pretty boring. So we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. And then we're gonna go over to our add modifiers and we're gonna to go to the simple deform. We're gonna enable it on the Z axis. And then over here, we're gonna type in 420. And that's gonna give us kind of like this rotation over here. The cool thing is this looks a little bit off. So at any point you can come in here and you could grab this and grab these verts here on the end and go G, Y or GX and just move it in a little bit. Kind of squish it in and adjust it till you feel like it looks like what you're going for. You could scale this on the Y a little bit. It's very customizable. Um, you can mess around with it all sorts of cool ways. But to make this look even better, we're gonna go ahead and give it a displace modifier. We're gonna go over to our texture properties and let's go new. Let's give that cloud and let's um, come here to the size. Let's take it up a little bit. And obviously at the moment it's way too big. So we're gonna go back to our modifier stack and under the strength here on the displace, we're just gonna drag that down. So I'm gonna go like this. I still feel like that noise is too big. So I'm just gonna go back to the texture here and increase it a little bit. And now we have definitely a bit more of an organic feel over here. Um, you, you can mess around, like I said, with that scale. But we just don't want them all to be exactly the same as you can see. So now um, it might even help to go to your subdivision surface modifier and bump that up as well. That can ov obviously have an effect on how the displacement is going to um, work anyway. But I don't think we should mess around with that too much more at this point. Um, let's just grab this and rotate it and kind of scale it down a little bit. And I'm just going to delete the other camera and in the front view, I'm going to add in a new camera and move it back a bit. And uh, you can position your camera however you want. I'm going to go something like this. And uh, let's go ahead to our render settings. Let's make it cycles. Let's make the device GPU and um, let's go to the render samples here. Let's make that I'm going to go 55 and let's go shift a let's add in a light. I'm going to add it up, take it to about here and give it a strength of 120 and then I'm going to go Z and I'm going to go rendered. And this is looking pretty cool. I might want to just move it back and duplicate it one or two more times. And so we kind of have this nice backlighting. It's going to give us a bit of room lighting, but obviously um, we still want to see it from the front. So I'll have a light kind of coming in here from the front a little bit. Might just move it up. I want a little bit of shadow kind of under um, these ribs here, but I don't want too much forward facing light. I really kind of like the idea of having some nice rim lighting. 
Um, what we could do now is we can go over to our render settings. I'm just going to go down to the film here and just go to transparent for now. And then with this DNA, we're going to give it a new material. By default, it already has one. So I'm just going to call it DNA because we um, use that default cube, right? So let's go over to our shading workspace. So we're in our shading workspace. We got rendered on here. We're going to go shift A down here and get a noise texture. Let's go shift A search and get a color ramp node. Let's plug the factor into the factor of the color ramp and then go shift A search and get a, uh, a bump. And let's plug the color into the height. And let's take that normal output from the bump and plug it into the normal of the principal shader. And now you can see we have some nice displacement. Um, however, if we just add in a mapping and a texture coordinate, we can take the object and plug it into the vector here. And that just distributes it a bit better. We're gonna take the detail and the noise, bring it up and the roughness here. And the scale, um, that's up to you. I'm gonna bring it down a bit. Other than that, we're gonna come here to the base color and I'm gonna go something organic. Um, I think pink or orangey peachy color would be good. Um, obviously this is stylized, so you can do whatever you want. And then we're gonna give it a subsurface value of 0 0.05. And then we're gonna just bring down the roughness just a little bit as well. And there we have some DNA. Um, what we could do probably is um, I'm going to go into edit mode and just maybe grab some of these and scale them down a little bit just to add a little bit more of a gap, but more or less I'm happy with this. I'm just going to duplicate this and rotate a little bit just to offset it. And maybe duplicate another one here. And now let's just make sure to save. I'm going to save this to my desktop. And let's go render and render image. And here we have some stylized sci-fi looking organic DNA molecules. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Um, I thought you might enjoy it. See what you can use this for. Maybe there's some kind of sci-fi project that you guys can kind of implement this idea with. So I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.